Hey everybody and welcome to episode 7. Lucky number 7. We made it! Siete. You're gonna keep... <laughs> I hope you cut that. Siete. Anyways, we're glad to be here. It's lucky number 7, so let's just hope everything runs smoothly. Break them with the 7. 7 11. That's Ice Cube again. I think you truly wanted to be a gangster rapper in, in one of your previous lives. I'm not? No, honey, you're not, and I'd love to bring you back to reality. <laughs> <laughs> you're a working father of four. Welcome to life. <laughs> no, we're here. We gotta do, I decided that I think we should do something big on every 10th episode. So you're telling me that on our 10-year wedding anniversary, we should renew our vows. Or I should get a bigger ring. Yeah, and no bigger ring. But what we should do, we can go to the courthouse again and do it. No, no, you said bigger. You should do something big every 10 years. We'll go to lunch because we didn't do that the first time. And I'll have a bigger ring. Nah. Okay. Well, let's get to the podcast. What are we talking about today? Um, we're going to do parenting. We are going to get controversial today. No, not us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We won't be talking about nut sacks again. I don't apologize for that. I yeah. laugh every time I see that part of the segment. If you didn't see episode six, I definitely referred to, referred to people as not being nut sacks. And Why? I'm, I don't really know. And if this is your first time listening to us, we apologize now. But we don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not really. So yeah, we're going to talk about... Um, a couple things that could be controversial. We're gonna talk about what electronics, kids using electronics, um, spoiling your kids, when to say no, and mom guilt. Uh, and then we're gonna go into discipline. Dun dun dun. We're gonna do it kind of a different format today. We are going. Christina's gonna give you one aspect of some of these controversial parenting subjects, and I'm gonna just take the other. It doesn't mean that's what I believe. But I'm going to play you guys out there that might actually feel that way. We're and this is how we goes. actually talk in real life. Ryan likes to play devil's <laughs> advocate with me all the time. It drives me nuts. True story. Yeah. So uh, let's see here. Um, my quick tip was going to be, uh, it's a quote that I read that I love. Um, and I'm sure every one of you have heard it. It's that there's no perfect parents. So just be a real one. I... I love this one and it's one that I need to live by. I need to stop seeking perfection because what I do with my kids and in my home is going to be completely different than my neighbor down the street who raises her kids a different way and that's okay and we all need to respect each other and realize that what works for you may not work for me but let's just all be real and have fun in this adventure of parenthood. We got some reviews to read too. I love this part. So, one of our things we love to do is read our five-star reviews, and we've made a promise to you guys, which we actually really like, but if you leave us a five-star review on iTunes, then we are going to read it, and we will read your name um, under it. What I love is hearing you <laughs> read, their, read their names on here, because it's probably not your actual name. Like, if your name is, like, Darla McAllister... But you're like in here as Snoopy123. Wow, you just went home alone to Snoopy. Dar McAllister. Yeah, but Darla's from uh, Little Rascals. Wow, you really changed that. I threw all it right. all in there. Our first one is from Run Britney Run. It says, My abs hurt. I made the mistake of listening to this podcast at work and I have never laughed so hard in my life. <laughs> Lots of stares from my coworkers, but totally worth it. These two are a perfect pair, and I love the way the podcast flows and is all over the place at the same time. It's full of great, real advice with just the right amount of comedy. Looking forward to more episodes from these two. Okay. You ready for the next one? China. Two, two, two. So, this is the second one, and it says, love it. Not surprising. It's awesome coming from Christina Boyce. I love how they keep it real and make it fun. Lots of great tips on everything I need. So Thank you for that. Thanks, Run Britney Run and China 222. Please keep your reviews coming. Um, we love hearing what you guys have to say. We love hearing the parts that you find funny or the parts that you can relate to and use in your own personal life. That's the best part for us. It validates that we're not just talking into these mics, that we're actually talking to you, that there's people behind the screen, there's people behind the headsets that, that we're connecting. And the whole reason we started this was because we wanted to connect on a real level with you guys. So it's kind of fun to know that that's happening. Yeah, so all you got to do is go on to iTunes, go into your iTunes account, go into the podcast app for Apple, either one of those. Find the No Filter Needed show, go on there, it'll say review, click that, give us a five-star review, and you'll be up next. 
Hey, Christina, who's our sponsor? Today is one that I love. It's Anson and me. The mom behind the shop is Krista, and she is a gem. She genuinely loves what she does, and she loves the people that she's doing it for, which is you and me. Um, she provides tons of apparel for your little ones for all seasons of life. I say that because... Um, I've actually used her onesies as gifts for friends and family. They have the cute little like, hello, my name is. Um, so you can announce the birth of a baby. She has the cutest little fall onesies and t-shirts for your kids all through ages. Um, but it's just, they bring a smile to your face and she, she loves what she does and that comes through in the products that she makes. I like talking to her. She, isn't she great? Yeah, she does. She messages and sometimes I try to pretend like I'm you. And You're so weird. The other reason is, is because on Facebook um, we share an account and then we also obviously share the no filter account on Instagram. So if she messages, sometimes I'll try to pretend to be Christina and then I sound nothing like it and no. I get called out every time. It's kind of like somebody wearing drag. Okay, we're going to keep going <laughs> definitely on that one. <laughs> I love when I like get to you and you don't even know what to say to me. Yeah, like I'm not even gonna go there. So let's go jump into our first segment. So do you we'll, want to start it or do you want me to start? No, it? I want you to start, and I want you to start with the first subject and talk about it. I want you to take your stance on it, and I'm gonna take the opposite, even whether that's how I feel or not. I'm gonna stand up. For my people out there, I don't know who they are, but Ryan's they're somewhere. Ryan's running a, a parenthood gang, apparently. Yeah, 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 daddy. What, your voice does this thing. It's the fuck, like, is somebody taking over your body? You can take over my body. What, why does it always have to go there? <laughs> you just got, it, look, the awkward silence is because it's awkwardly silent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think you have electronics being the first. Jump into it, go ahead. Obviously it's first because it's one that I struggle with as a parent. Um, the two main points that I put down is how much is too much? So how, how much time spent or how many electronics is too many electronics? And then the next one is how young is too young? So I'm going to start with, I think I'll start with how young is too young. Uh, so anybody that follows along with us knows we have four kids. Um, Ireland is big into watching kids YouTube. We have set it up so that she can't watch the regular YouTube because I don't know if you guys saw that controversy about the video that was that daddy finger song. Wasn't it daddy finger? And yeah, like when Mickey was Mickey killing his was family. Stabbing people? Yeah, shooting him in the head. Yeah. That's, that wasn't cool. Look, there's that some at crazy all. people in this world, so God bless them all. But um so she's only allowed to watch kids YouTube and she watches it on my phone. So if you try to text or call me, it's usually because Ireland has my phone. Um we no longer let her have the phone at night. She used to fall asleep watching it. And then I read statistics about how it can like screw up a kid's eyes and blah, 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 blah. So she's only allowed to watch a TV show, but even that is, that's up for grabs on whether or not that's, that's a good thing to do. All right, let's stop right there. All right, let's, let's address the first question. Are how you taking you notes? I, I'm writing points down because- Oh, it's like a real debate. It is, and I love to debate. Do I have a gavel? No, because because I would win. The jury I, is, I would win. It's the jury okay. is always on my side. Actually, it's not. <laughs> the jury's still out on that one. No. All right. Wow. So let's let's start with that first question. Okay. Christina, how young is too young? Well, that's where I'm struggling because Ireland will be three in September. And I almost wonder if her watching the YouTube shows, like this girl will watch YouTube videos on unwrapping toys. So now when we go into Target, she knows the exact spot that those toys are, which will go into the next segment of spoiling your kids. But she knows exactly where the toys are and wants the exact toys she's seen on TV. So I guess I will stand with, oh God, it's so hard because like when you're out to dinner, you wanted to have it so that they're quiet, but... Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say under three is too young. And I'm going against my own self here, so just understand that. Okay. We're gonna I use... can't wait to hear how many comments we're going to get from this. Let me, we're going to use Ireland as our, our test subject. Okay. Can she count to 15? Yes. Without any help? Yes. Can she do every single letter in the alphabet? I think so. Yes. 
can she distinguish almost every color? Yes. Can she distinguish almost every shape? Okay, I think I see where you're going with this. Yes, she can. Okay. Where do you think that came from? I am an amazing homeschool teacher. <laughs> she does not do homeschool. Uh, do it's from YouTube. You. It is from YouTube. And that is some scary stuff because let me flip that and whatever little subliminal messages are coming through there like, hey, let's go pick up all the trolls toys from Target because some weird ladies are unwrapping it, them. This is Essie. Oh, I shouldn't do that. But that sounded just like her. This it, is Essie from Toys Unlimited. Okay, we're done with No, that. every mom is going to know that voice. No, you're probably right. But <laughs> if you put Ireland into what she would be going into is a two and a half. Nope, three-year-old. Three-year-old school right this minute which she's about to go into right would she be ahead of her class yes okay but i well no if she was in a two and a half year old program she would be ahead of her class uh yeah maybe yeah yes okay so now we're only using one person here as a test subject and we can't determine whether she's extremely bright she's my daughter so i'm gonna say yes but I'm going to tell you that the majority of that is coming through songs because she does listen to a lot of yes. nursery rhymes, songs, and a lot of it is colors, shapes, numbers. So it is absolutely crucial that you're regulating what they're watching and making sure that you're keeping an eye on it. Now let's flip it just a second and say your three-year-olds and under are getting these electronics. Are you giving it to them because you're being a lazy parent? Yeah. <laughs> as quick as it was to say that, hey, that debate, the look that debate of was shame over. that you just gave me. That debate was over in a second. So, listen, that one might have just burned. Your ears might be burning. You might be like, really, if you're watching YouTube, like giving me the devil look, like, Ryan, you shut up. I think, too, if you know, go into that. And I think the reason we can say this stuff openly is because I'm the mom that's giving my kid the phone. Um, I agree. I stopped, I stopped giving it to her as much because I realized that I wasn't taking time to read to her. I wasn't taking time to do puzzles. I wasn't taking time to color with her. And it goes back to what episode did we do where I spent too much time on social media? It was because I was doing too much stuff that I felt, okay, I'm gonna give you the phone and the phone's gonna teach you what you need to know. So my daughter could potentially go into a three-year-old preschool class, be above her, be above, no, I'm not saying smarter, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying she ahead, made, of, where, ahead of where she needs yeah. to be, not because of what her mother taught her, but because of what a phone and YouTube taught her. That's you know, kind of crazy. You wanna know what else is crazy? And during that same process, that person could be getting more depressed because of the same action. What do you mean? The phone, the time being spent on social media, the parent could be getting worse in their self-esteem while the child is getting better. How crazy is that? Yeah, mind blown. <laughs> um, All right, so I, this is kind of a- uh, It's, it's an of, open discussion. Yeah, well that one's kind of a tie because basically what I'm hearing is don't be a lazy parent make sure that you're regulating what they're watching but if you're they're watching the right stuff then they could be constantly learning over and over and over i mean that is the joy of of um technology nowadays like our kids can learn so many things so it's that one's so tough all right the next one i have was under electronics but how much is too much like do your kids have a knobby an ipad an xbox and a tv so mine would be, hell yes, too much is too much. Like, I, I'll go into my boys' room, and they'll be playing. Ryan and the boys are, they're addicted right now to, what is it, Clash Royale? Yes, and I wouldn't use the word addicted. Oh, I absolutely would. Mm. I know an addiction when I see one, boo. We have morning battles and then evening battles. And then during the day, the boys are trying to gain points and whatever legendaries are to kick your butt later in the night. So yeah, no, no, it's a full blown addiction. See, this is tough for me to take the other side. Because, <laughs> no, I'm saying 
Oh, because you agree with me. No, Say it out to loud. Me, to me. Say it out loud. Say I agree with my oh, wife. Oh, God. <laughs> we'll keep going. So, to me, the way that this one, I don't know if I can take the other side, people. You're going to have to stand for yourselves on this one. <laughs> because if I see those kids midday, and this is summertime, obviously, midday, afternoon, early evening, on the phones, inside, on the PlayStation, on the Wii, whatever, I lose my mind. I'm like, get your butts outside. Go get scraped up. Go get dirty. Do something. Go cause trouble outside. Like I'm even, I'm not recommending that, but in my head I'm thinking it's better than. Go you. do what I did when I was a kid. You go cause trouble. Well, <laughs> not that kind of trouble. But go, go be boys. Go be rough and tough. Go outside. Go be imaginary. Go use sticks, leaves. I don't care. Figure out what to play. Play something. Beat up on each other. But get your eyeballs off that screen because I'm going to yank your little fingers right off of it. Wow, that's want. a little bit aggressive. I'm that, sorry. That's aggressive. It's, it's, a, it's the world. <laughs> we'll get we, comments on that one. <laughs> it's the, hey, it's the world we live in today. And it's like, come on, look, I get it. And I want them to be able to enjoy their time. So to me, it's not that I wanted to start playing games. Actually, I was very, very much against having any games on my phone. To me, my phone is business only. And that's all it's used for. So I did it because I needed to know what they were into. And I needed to know what was being done. Because in some of these games, and I know on Xbox, there's headsets. And you can talk to other people that are out there. And well, I don't even know now, the, the ones that are the... Is it, is it this one that they're playing that you guys can have like a chat? So you have to regulate who's in the chat. Well, there's a chat for everything. But this one is a type texted one on the phone. I mean, on the... You have to type in to be able to, to chat. But on Xbox, there's a headset, and they can hear you like you can hear me right now, and you're talking to people. Yeah, no, that creeps me out. Yeah, Kids so, should be doing that. So, look, when it comes to being an involved dad, I'm on it. I need to know what's going on. And, no, I hey, look, do. sometimes I like competition. I want to kick their you ass. You like competition? Mm. You're a little bit obsessed with competition. A it's a good thing. It's a, a good thing. It's a healthy competition. Okay, so the next one that I had on here was spoiled. God forbid we talk about our kids being spoiled. Now, let's go ahead and flip the script, okay? Okay. okay. I want you to take your normal position and I'll take mine, which actually is opposite on this. So this is good. This is, this is how we spend too much money in Target. I might elbow Christina in the face in the middle of this podcast. Again, we will get comments. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't. All right, go ahead. All right, I said when to say no. Okay, so the reason I put this on here is it goes back to Ireland now knows where all the little goodie boxes are when you walk into Target. Pain in my ass, but it's the truth. So I am one of those. When I was younger, there was three sisters, okay? And we grew up where we got, we were very blessed. We got things that we needed and we got things that we wanted but my mom and dad never just like like if you went to a store you didn't just get a toy because you were in the store um which i actually love them for that and i wish i could do it more me on the other hand i'm like oh i remember that feeling when i was a kid and i walked into a store i wanted something so when my kids are like but can i get something i'll always be like okay well it's got to be something small like that daddy won't yell at me for. <laughs> so I don't want to go to the guy. If you can see the YouTube video, Ryan has so much disgust on his face for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm It's like ugh. searing through the screen. Um, but no, I, I have not learned how to say no. And, and I, I think it's a problem that I need to work on, I get. No, let's get deep. Oh boy. Do you think that's because you're a stay at home mom? Yes. Wow. I didn't think you were gonna admit that. No, I do. I think it's my way of feeling like I can give them something. Like I, we're getting at, like I, he's like, well, why do you always have to go to the store? I think it's my way of getting out of the house. Like, I think that's why if we want to break it down to another level, men joke on women so much for going to Target, but I can guarantee you a majority of the women that go to Target are stay at home moms and they're going to Target as a break from their day. It's like, we have coffee, we fed the kids, we had quiet time, we go to Target. 
it it's a break in their day. So is that same break okay for the guy that wants to go to the bar and get a drink? Why are you what where why are we taking it there? Target serves wine. No, no, they don't. Mine does not, unfortunately. But there are a lot of them out there right now that do. Are you taking the kids to the bar? No. And you want to escape to get away from the kids, so you. No, I'm Target. saying no. I thought we were talking about bringing the kids to Target. Okay, so we'll reel that back in. Thanks. All right. So, look, the way that I didn't have a hard childhood. My parents were very nice. I gracious. Did. They were gracious, and I had to, yes, work or work being school sometimes and do those things to get stuff. I wasn't just handed everything. But to me, I'm not going to teach my kids that just because they whine, because they can't have something, lets them get that. Absolutely not. They okay, bop, bop, bop. Pump the brakes. That's not true. I think we both want to agree that we want to feel that way, but when it comes down to it, if Ireland cries, Ireland get what she wants. Ireland absolutely gets what she wants. We <laughs> so then here's the next question. <laughs> no. no, no, it has do to do you with agree? that. It does, but okay. she's two years old. My seven-year-old and my nine-year-old boy are not being taught that lesson. They're being taught that they need to absolutely work for what they want. So, right, but, at, here but goes, so then let's give another question then. At what age does that change? Because I, the boys, Connor gets everything he wants. No, he doesn't. Connor went, we, perfect example, folks, just went into Target the other day. And N Jonah brought his money. So him and Noah picked out a game together. They bought a game with Jonah's money that was from his birthday or that he earned. Ireland asked for a toy. I suckered into it. Connor also wanted a toy, and I said no. Okay, I'm going to break this down for you. <clears throat> Not f for you, but for this, your, this for your parent game for my people. For yeah. my people. All right, you just said Noah and Jonah went in with their own money to buy something, right? Okay, so a two year old Ireland can go in and buy it? No, no, okay. no, that's my point. Is that the lessons I'm teaching my boys, they need to work for it if they want something. That was just shown when they went into Target, right? Right. Ireland at two, she can't work for her money, right? Right. So she's being given stuff that she wants. Connor being one, doesn't really know what he wants. Right. He's just grabbing stuff. Right. So you're not buying that for a one-year-old because he's going to have no clue when he gets home that he wasn't able to get something. Now, I would say that with Ireland, she should be getting toys only if she's doing something like her behavior is how do you teach that to a two-year-old you don't give her the toy i'm look i am teaching myself as i'm talking no but what, but what i'm saying is there's not just uh this metaphor of the terrible twos you have a two-year-old who we just established a one-year-old does not know the difference. A two-year-old just found out the difference. And now they're just finding out that they scream, kick, cry to get anything they want. Okay? Okay. At three, sometimes that terrible twos go into three. So honestly, I think a three-year-old is the exact same as a two-year-old. At four years old, you are now in kindergarten. No, you're not. No? No. Five years old. You're at four years old. So are we classifying two, three, and four as the same? Toddlers. Okay. So you're basically saying at five years old, you can be in pre-K? Kindergarten. Okay. So then at four, you're in pre-K. Right. There's responsibility there. Okay. There's responsibility if you're in a three-year-old pre preschool class too. So Do you what, see that this whole debate has taken on a whole new like... <laughs> no, but if this is some very good. This is a very. Ryan very feels good, like he's learning stuff. Right no, now. I mean, I, I listen. I love debates, and it could be a downfall. It could be a blessing. Who knows? I haven't figured it. I'm still married, so obviously it's not that much of a downfall. Or I just like to debate with you. True. So we're gonna say that two, three, and four is basically the same. They are learning who they are, and how they fit into the family dynamic. At five years old, there's responsibility. There is a 
responsibility for school now because you're getting grades in kindergarten. Right. There is sports usually start around the five year mark. Right. You can play T ball, you can play soccer. You can play soccer a little bit younger, but you got gymnastics, um, swimming, whatever, whatever you want to do. You now have a responsibility as a five year old. So at five years old, are you making them work for the stuff they want? Probably. I would say at five, you start giving them chores. Okay. So I think that sums that particular question up that one, it's okay to deny them. They have no idea. Two, three, and four, you're kind of... I think two, three, and four, you're navigating between teaching them to be, to want and need something. I, I believe that's where you start teaching a want and a need. I also think that's where you start teaching kids to be grateful for things. Like if I'm constantly giving Ireland a toy, right? She's, this is hands down, like I... Uh, I'm just going to say it. She will take a toy and the next day want a toy again because she has no concept because she's just constantly being given it. Where I mean, if I go into a store and I say, no, you don't get a toy today, she's going to she's gonna pitch a fit. She's going to cry. I'm going to have to go through my whole, like, Christina, calm yourself. But it's going to teach her, no, we do not get a toy every time we walk into a store. No, you do not get something just because you want it. Right? That's the theory. That's not what's being practiced here. Here it's not, but I'm saying if that was put into practice, like I would love to hear if you're out there and you do practice that, do you find that your kids are more excited when they get toys? And I want to add on to that question and go to Facebook, Instagram, um, put it in public. I know a lot of you guys are messaging us and we love it, but I want to hear and go back and forth between people a little bit. So. Let's get it on the website in the comment section. You can click the comment in each episode or let's get it on to Instagram. Let's get it on to Facebook and let's start that discussion. Let's have an open parent discussion on this one. And I want to add to that question. I want to add, how do you regulate the toys and the gifts when potty training? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> like seriously, because you are teaching reward for accomplishing something with potty training and two, three, and four is potty training. Mind blown. So we're asking you go give us some feedback, please. We love it. This and is please the also let's put this disclaimer out there. There is no parent shaming. If you see a comment that you don't agree with, oh, that's I'll, totally hey, fine. I'll delete your crap if you're hating on somebody. <laughs> don't be a don't be a nut sack. <laughs> You can't delete it. I'm going to make all these words come together so you can't delete it. Okay. Game break. Game break. I'm glad you, I like, I try to say it really fast, like game break, because you would try to do some like weird techno robotic voice that kind of creeped me out. And I didn't want you to have that opportunity. We are going to play. Oh my God. Craft beer or indie band. First off, I would like to put out there that this has nothing to do with parenting. Well, you might need some beers. <laughs> that's what you want to promote. Um, that's coming from somebody who doesn't drink. <laughs> so, all right, we're gonna we're gonna this was gonna be a heavy debated a show. So I wanted to get something a Fun little bit, yeah, yeah something like completely that. different. So that way. It just completely relieved Breaks us. The tension. Yeah, before we go back into wanting to punch each other in the face. All right, are you ready? I am. So the, we're taking a quiz, and I'm going to ask you. Namaste. There are two options, okay? I'm okay. going to look four. Okay. Hairy goat. <laughs> <laughs> Hairy goat. All right, well, if the last one was a beer, then I'm going to say band. <clears throat> Dang it! It's a beer, an English style Indian pale ale. It just, uh, you can't, like, you're at a bar, like, <laughs> you see a hot girl, and she's like, I want a hairy goat. It's from the West Cork <laughs> Mountain Man Brewing Company. Tell me you went laughing. If you're sitting at a bar and you saw a hot girl and you're like, hey, what can I get you to drink? She's like, you know what? I want a hairy goat. I'd be like, marry me instantly. <laughs> marry me, please. Good God. All right, Good you ready? Know. Number five, Fox yeah. Jaw. Band. Ding, ding, ding. I knew if I said band, I would get it right all the way. Bluesy rock five piece from Lime Rick. I All like right. bluesy. All right. Dead guy. Dead guy. Mmm. Band. 
Uh, Dang it. Come on, I used to drink this beer when I drink. Um, it's a beer, a very tasty American ale from the Rogue Brewing Company. It's actually called Dead Guy Ale. Oh. But they just call it Dead Guy. Just so you know, that did make a difference to me. All right, number seven, Oscar Blues. Band. Uh, what the F? <laughs> <laughs> Beer. It's a Colorado-based craft brewery. All right, number eight, Darling. Well, now I just feel dumb if I say band, but I'm going to say band. Ding, 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 Thank ding. Thank you. Name on Today FM's 14 acts for 2014. All right, number nine, White Gypsy. Beer. Ding, 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 ding. Thank God. It's a series of beers named after the rivers that run through the places of brewing inspiration. I don't huh. even know what that means, but whatever. No. All right, number 10, last one. I can one. tell by how you trailed off the sentence. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah. Number 10, Terry Maltz. What the fuck? Terry Maltz. Beer. Dang it. I knew this one was going to get you. It's a band. That's why you like accentuated the Maltz. I know. That's Terry Maltz and the San Francisco-based musical trio. Oh, okay, Terry. I All right, got Terry. You. We're in San Fran. We'll check you out. Yeah, dog. we will. Probably not. All right, that wraps up the craft beer or indie band quiz. And I failed. Yeah, you did real bad. Just so you know, I don't even like beer, but if we did like a wine challenge, I probably would have been doing okay. You'd probably be drunk by now. That's hurtful. Because <laughs> first off, I don't drink that much. Um... All right, now that we've all realized that, one, I don't know beer or indie bands very well, at least we got to have a chuckle at the hairy goat, which we will, <laughs> we will never forget the hairy goat. Hashtag hairy goat. <laughs> which hey. just makes me think of Nutsack. <laughs> oh, my God. That's like the third time. Seriously. <laughs> Tell me it doesn't make you think of Nutsack. We obviously need to handle something after the show. You have got something on your mind. Oh my god. Okay, so hey, let's, let's talk discipline. This is gonna This is gonna be a a fun one. Cause I put the topic Why as Why are you like pounding your fist? Because like I know be, because I already know that this topic is going to create tension. Like either you you lean one way or you lean another way. For example, okay? I lean one way. Which way do you want? Well, hold on, because let me preference what I'm going to say. Okay. I lean one way, and yet I was reading the, these 18 important facts about spanking, and as I'm reading like the intro, the because it's a blog that she did, um, I'm reading the intro, and I'm getting mad at her, even though I, I, I agree with what she's saying, and I'm like, okay, wait, do I agree with my own self, or do I not? Like, it's such that? a hard topic. We won't discuss what you agree with and what you don't agree with. I'm gonna ask you this. What stance do you want to take? I'll take the opposite. Um, I guess we'll, oh, that's tough. Which one do you want? Let's do not to spank. So you are, you're gonna take the stance of not to spank. Not physical, not, not physical de uh, discipline. Not physical. And I'm gonna take the stance of physical discipline. Okay. So my, I, I'm gonna sway more towards verbal discipline. Okay, which not is not great anyways, but oh well. Um, so I found a, hold on one second, I found an article and it was 18 facts about, because I put in to spank or not to spank, because that was the topic that I wanted to go over. And it's hard. I, so I was raised, me and Ryan were both raised by military fathers. So I think anybody that was raised by a military father knows that they are big on discipline. They're big on respect, discipline, and following the rules. With that comes old fashioned spanking. And when I was a kid, I'm not gonna lie to you, I hated being spanked, but I will tell you this, my parents did pretty good raising me to follow the rules, be respectful, be appreciative, um, and not to do things more than once because you didn't want dad to come in and, you know, spank your behind, so. Did that factor into your college years? Are you, ew, <laughs> you're fucking weird. No, I don't, that mean, out. <laughs> I don't mean spanking. I'm talking about you doing things the way you're supposed to. Yeah, I, well, but, because it's, you, you have the fear of God from your parents. If they do it the right way, there, it, you can have a fear of it. So, I, anyways, I'm going to go with, even though I was raised on the two spank, 
I'm going to take the not to spank. Okay, so the topic at hand is to spank or not to spank. We decided when we were going into this segment that we were going to, we were each going to take a side because with something as controversial as the topic of discipline, you have to have two sides. So you have to be able to debate it. So I am going to take on the not to spank side. Ryan is going to take on the to spank. And that way we can get both, um, both ends of the spectrum. So I don't know if you have stats for not spanking or disciplining. Um, I found an article for the, um, the, the argument of not to spank your kids. Um, so I will tell you that for me, I think verbally reprimanding your children can be just as effective as physically reprimanding your children. Yes or no? Yeah, I mean, or what are your thoughts? Yes. It it can be done. Do I think there is a difference between the two, one being worse than the other? Absolutely. Okay. I think screaming at your kids is not good because you are going to scream, and I'm just going to take this stance. Right. Um, if you scream at your kids over and over, you are going to mentally scar them for life to the point where if they hear anybody getting loud, they are going to cower. Okay, well then I'm going to go and debate against you and say, okay, so if you spank your kid, your kid now knows that physical um, retaliation is the way to handle a situation. If I jumped into a viper pit and got bit, am I going to jump into that viper pit again? No, but that's the same as saying, okay, if I was about to jump into a viper pit and somebody yelled at me um, to, you're saying that if somebody yelled at me, it was going to scar me for life that that somebody yelled at me not to jump in the pit to get bit. You got verbally reprimanded. There we go. And it happened over and over and over. Because let's be honest, you're going to verbally reprimand somebody way more than you're going to spank somebody. Say that again. As a parent, yes or no, answer this question. You would verbally, not saying you, but somebody in, in this position, okay. would be more likely to verbally reprimand them than spank them. In, in what situation? Jumping in the pit? No, just a kid acting up, doing something they shouldn't be doing. Okay, here's what I'm asking. You're saying if a kid is acting up, you think more parents are going to verbally reprimand or physically reprimand? Is that what you're asking me? I'm asking you. Let's say that little Johnny just punched his sister. Okay. Okay. And you've told little Johnny before, politely, do not hit your sister. Right. And it's gotten to that point. He's testing you. Do you lay into him verbally or do you spank him? So this is, this is what's hard because if I hit little Johnny and as I hit him, I say, whack, whack, don't you know hitting is bad? What, what comes out of that? That's a very good point. <laughs> I mean, you are mentally telling your kid, I am bigger than you, and I am telling you, I'm going to hit you, but don't you dare hit her. I don't have a comeback to that. And it's not that you won this debate. It is. It's not. Because more than likely, if you took 10 parents. Right. Well, I, I can would, tell you right now, four in five Americans believe it's sometimes appropriate to spank a child. That's it. You know what's funny? I was going to say, if you took 10 parents, six of them are going to verbally reprimand them over spanking, right? Right. And your statistic just proved that. So you're going to verbally reprimand them, right? Right. He's going to walk away. He's You're have an attitude. Yep. He still has an attitude. He's going to do something again. You're going to verbally reprimand him again. You're going to get more mad. He's going to keep pushing your button, especially depending on the age. You're going to verbally reprimand him. You're going to verbally reprimand him. And then throughout that course of the day, you'll probably find that you're going to end up yelling at that particular child a ton that day. Yep. I agree. You spank him one time. Guaranteed it's done. So that's another one that's a hard one to go against because I agree that if you constantly are I wouldn't say belittling because I don't think a parent goes up to the kid and is like you're a total piece of crap Like you worthless blah, blah. I mean now look there are some parents that are just awful and that's what they say to their kids I'm saying 
most parents go up and are like, don't you ever do that again? Like, I can't believe you just hit your sister. Don't you know that that's not nice? Like, you hurt her feelings. That That's what I'm talking about, verbal reprimanding. Can I throw a third option out there I just thought of? So, well, because I was going to I was gonna go that route too and say, so if we are, we're obviously agreed that if we spank our kid and say, I'm spanking you, don't go hit her, that it's totally negating the whole discipline that you're doing. If we're verbally telling our kid over and over again, then he's doing nothing but just hearing, he's hearing the tone, right? Mom's angry. She's yelling. I don't like when she yells. I don't like, now it's just this, like they're taking on this code of emotion, right? So then it comes down to, well, what would the third option be? Time out, taking things away? Yes, or writing. I'm sorry, what? Go old school with it. Make them write on a piece of paper a hundred times, I will not hit my sister. Are we going to do that at our house? <laughs> I've told the kids that I would do that before. Why don't we do the Hug It Out t-shirt? Listen, I love the creativity, and actually we have done this. We have done this where the boys were beating up on each other, and I got out one of my shirts. I put it over both of them. Their heads popped out of the neck hole together, and you know the shirt was tight. It made them pretty much be on top of each other. And until they could figure it out and stop being mad at each other, they weren't allowed out of that shirt. I, look, I, I love the idea. I love any idea that does, because I think if the more talking about it, I think that verbal punishment and physical punishment are truly equally bad. Like, I, I agree, we have to discipline our children. I also agree that that's why I think children nowadays just run rampant and they have a lack of respect for their parents because we don't know how to discipline correctly. Then, that, then, then that's what needs to be answered. How do you get a child, because that's what the millennials are facing right so, now. Speaking of millennials, it's saying spanking by generations, the statistics. 72% of millennial parents, um, I think, hold on, spank. 82% of Gen Xers spank. 85% of the baby boomers were spank, were the spanker. 88% of mature parents. So it's decreasing by generation. So I'm surprised 70% of millennials are spanking. Yeah, but I mean, you got to think about it. that's a 16% drop from mature parents. Like, that's a pretty decent drop. No, I thought they just would put them into a closet and play Mumford and Sons. Are you? Oh my God! <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I love Mumford and Sons, by yes, the way. Yes, he does. Do not, we both do. I, I use them as an example because I myself love them. Anyways, but I'm all for creative parenting. Um, it does not have to be clear cut this way or this way. Yeah. There is a third option, there's a fourth option, there's a fifth option. And one way is gonna work great for one parent, and one way is gonna work great for another parent. And I'm not here to tell you either way is wrong. What yeah. I'm here to tell you is that you need to think about the growth of your child mentally, physically, and emotionally. And if one way that you're disciplining, you're not getting the result, it's not working. Choose a that. different way. So it also says in here, um, because we, first we were talking about generational, right? And now it's talking about spanking by region. So it says that, which I think is pretty funny, um, because a lot of people say that our southern roots keep us like very traditional, right? I'm southern, y'all. So 86% of southern parents spank, 83% of Midwest parents spank, 86% of West Coast, and 75% of East Coast. Okay, so. so I got severe ADD. Who's the most? Southern. <laughs> Makes sense. And Who's number two? Midwest. Well, so. So it's got those like. Country roots. Not country, but just they bring they bring it back to like the foundation of I'm your parent. You will listen to me. Where I feel like West Coast, it's not a bad thing, but West Coast is very laid back. They everything's trendy. Do you know what I mean? So if one person's doing it, the other person's doing it. Um, I do think it's funny that West and East Coast are very laid back. If you think about beach lifestyle, everything's a little bit more. It would be funny to look at what? 10 years of marijuana is legal everywhere. What? What the? Is to see if those statistics drastically change. Okay, so where is the one in here? It talks about um, why kids... Actually, there's a statistics in here that says one in four parents begin to spank at six, years, six months old. That's crazy to six me. Months? Six months? Your kid isn't even crawling. Like, what are you spanking your kid for at six months old? 
Yeah, I don't, that's... That kind of blew my mind. That's, I know we're not supposed to, like, put it out there, but... I'm not parent-shaming, but that's young. That's really young. I mean, that's... Um, what were you saying about marijuana? What I was saying was it'd be interesting in 10 years to see that same survey and to see if it drops by half. What well, was saying that um, one of the facts on here was that the reason that it says parents are more likely to spank when they are angry, depressed, tired, and stressed. Of course. So if you think about it... <clears throat> I bet you divorce has the same exact problem. No, I agree with you. But I was thinking back on it to like when we were talking about verbally and physically uh, reprimanding kids. It's like... If you took a step back, right, as a parent, you gave yourself a timeout first and then came in and handled the situation, do you think you would discipline differently? Absolutely. Okay. So. Absolutely. And I think that people need to step their parenting game up. I do. I think we've become very, very I think people lazy. have gotten lazy. I think they've got reliant on electronics themselves. And if something is interrupting their particular moment. Preach! Preach! That... <laughs> They get mad. Oh, don't in, don't you, you know, little Johnny, don't mess up my Instagram feed. I'm sitting here reading through it. I don't care if you're hungry. Go sit in a corner. Yeah, and then and then you get angry with them when all they're trying to do is tell you that you're hungry. Or yeah. the reason that you know your two youngest siblings are fighting is because they just want attention. That's all they want, and you're not giving it to them. And I'm not saying put all of it on parents. Like we get it. We have four kids. Uh, four different age levels. We get that kids can be little jerks sometimes and it has nothing to do with us as parents Like we could be doing an amazing job and our kids will still push our buttons So we just have to lay that foundation down and say we're not calling parents out, but I will say I think there needs to be uh, a reality check a little bit of Look at it. Are you, are they interrupting something that you're doing and that's why you're mad? Yeah. Exactly. Or are they legit being assholes? Yeah. Because if it's interrupting you, then maybe you should check that discipline. If it's not interrupting you and they legit need to be disciplined, well then you need to handle your business. But I think that I would say maybe half of people Discipline because of their being interrupted. Yeah, I mean, I know that I can call myself out and say that that's half the time why I get irritated is because I'm in the middle of doing something that I think is important. It's not. Um, but even recently, like I've been talking about my social media, I've been taking a step back, and I will say the way that I'm handling situations is much different because I'm not so consumed with things that I thought were important. So the only reason I asked that was because I've noticed a change in the way that I'm disciplining our children. Um, but eight, it's a tough one. It's so tough. Years. You get 18 years to enjoy those interruptions. So, because you're going to have, I don't know, if you're lucky, 50 of them, 50 more years, that you might not ever get those interruptions. Well, that's so <laughs> is it really, really that important? Is it really that bad that they're interrupting you? Do you want 18 years of your kids' interruptions or 50 years of silence? Oh, tweet that. Seriously, <laughs> you want to get deep. That's what it's about. How, so, how, how really important is that feed, that email, that tweet, that post? How important is it? You but, have 50 years to do it silently. No, and I agree with you, but I also think that's why I said we have to come back to is you there's still if if you're if our boys hit each other, right? Like the other day we had we had a we had World War Three happening upstairs and we and look, if you have boys, you I know that I came around I was crying. I was like, Oh my god, my boys and he's like, Babe, they're just boys. They've got all this aggression, like they're gonna they have to figure it out and you gotta step back and stop being such a girl. <laughs> but in situations like the ones that they had, that had nothing to do with me and Ryan um being what's the word I'm looking for? Interrupted. Interrupted. That was just pure brother aggression. That was them testing each other and that was them having a moment of bad judgment for themselves. So that had to be disciplined. So if we take that scenario, right? What what stance is it? Is it do you verbally handle that or do you physically handle that? I think it's different for the child. Okay. I've got one child who emotionally cannot handle yelling. I've got another child who you could yell at him to he you're blue in the face and he'll laugh at you. 
And then I've got that same child that if I come to him, like I'm about to whip his behind, that handles it right there. Where I've got the other child who I could whip his behind and he really wouldn't care. See, I think that we, and I agree with you, I think we have one child that just the thought of him disappointing somebody is enough to, I mean, it'll shut him down. Like, you don't even have to touch him. You don't have to verge. Just knowing that he let you down is enough discipline for him. The other one, I agree. It's, you can be talking to him until you're blue in the face. You can be yelling and crying. He doesn't care a lick that you are even remotely like upset about the situation, you could probably spank him and it may or may not get through to him. So it's no, a, it, w- it, it, it will, but it's a touchy subject because I think, and to wrap it up, my final thoughts that I have is no matter how you parent, you are the only one that knows your kids. Your friends may be around your kids. Your family may help with your kids, but you live with your kids. You raise your kids. You know your kids, just like how we said, I know that I have a kid that's very tender hearted and he's very emotional. I also know I have a kid that's very like aggressive and he likes to speak out and be physical. I know that. I know that because I'm around it all the time. So what I choose and what Ryan chooses to do as parents, that's our choice. That is nobody else's business. So to wrap it up. No parent shaming. Yeah. It's and like they said, there's no, in the very beginning, there's no perfect parents. Just be a real one. Stick by what you do. And if it works for your family, then kudos to you. Nobody should give you flack for that. The only reason we're having this is because it's an open discussion where Sometimes I like to hear, you know, I want to hear another mom like, okay, well, you, you spank your kids. Well, why do you spank them? Do you, do you find that it helps? Okay. You don't spank your kids. Well, what do you do? Because I'd like to incorporate that in my house too. So this might cause more of an uproar than episode five did. <laughs> That's, let's just get to episode 10 where people are just like, there's like a whole bunch of a riot. <laughs> my goodness. All but, right, guys, listen, I want you guys to go on Facebook, go on Instagram, and let us know your thoughts, not while your kids are trying to get your attention. Though. Yeah, no, but, definitely not. Wait hey, till they're napping. You can send us messages. We definitely reply back quickly, but put it out there. Let's get a group of people talking because I'm seeing the messages come through about how we're helping marriages. Like, no joke, we have gotten... So would, many. Would you say three this week from the last... Yeah. Where... The husband is watching the podcast with his wife and is changing the behavior of how he treats his wife. Like that to me. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a, that's just God. Like we, we did this podcast hoping that we would get that and to hear the results. I mean, it, it, it blows me away. It gives, it makes my, the hair on my neck stand up. Well, I think it's good because the whole reason we started this was because we wanted to connect with couples. We wanted couples to have a place where they felt safe. Like, hey, here's an imperfect couple trying to talk it all out. So we have this safe comfort zone where we can all be like, hey, listen, we're coming in this together, banged and bruised, but let's get to the end in one piece. Hashtag stay married. <laughs> and you know, the other cool thing about it is, is I would love to hear the story of helping you being a parent. Yes. If I could change the way that somebody treats their children, that would blow my mind. Yeah. And I think we say that because we're also, I mean, parenting is a daily. But think about it. That's a generational change. Oh, I agree. If you could change the way that somebody treated their children, their children are going to change the way that they treat their children. And then it's going to keep going. So to make a difference like that is mind blowing. So I guess to wrap the whole thing up, we appreciate you listening. We hope that, you know, this starts a conversation to think about. I know that it's made me think about every time I walk into Target, if I should grab another one of those Tum Tum toys or whatever they're called, I'm going to have to write into SE from Toys Unlimited. Um, But it's fun. It's fun to talk about parenting because we're in this together and it's hard. It is not easy. So have those comments come in. Let's, Let's have a chat. And we just thank you for listening to us for seven episodes, and we'll see you next week. Peace out, y'all. <laughs> you too. We did it. Seven. We're going to go get some lunch because I'm starving. I don't know what this is. Oh, my. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Peace.